Hello, welcome back. I spent an awful lot of time on that 1541 and then I realized after I put it all back together that I didn't swap the chips out of it. Anyway, that I just can't do right now. I just can't do it. Because I have another thing to look at and in front of you you probably see a Commodore 64 and a VIC-20. Commodore 64, I have to shuffle out of the way. But if you do remember, I had a VIC-20 that came up with an orange screen. And I consulted with Rudy of Rudy's Retro Intel. Because he has this magical spreadsheet thing laid out with problems and what they could be. And I know there are other places. And I've searched online. Nowhere do I find anything that says what it is if a VIC-20 has an orange screen. And it's an orange screen that comes up immediately. There's no sort of, oh yeah, we're thinking, we're thinking, oh, it's orange. It's just boom. So I have another big 20 here. And yes, it's time to experiment. Alrighty. So, <laughs> here we have the big 20 that produces the orange screen. And I have some things to unplug. And I can very carefully tuck this 64 down there. So, first, I'm just going to set this here. And I'm going. Now, yes, this VIC 20 is dirty. But, it does seem to work. Now, this cable, yes. Cable does go to the monitor. And here we have the power supply that came from a Commodore 64 that came with a 1764 RAM expander, so it's a beautiful one. Kind of like a 128 power supply. We're going to turn this big 20 on and see that it comes up. Look at that. Isn't it lovely? Lovely. And once again, this monitor has funny things in the corners. I need to look into um, uh, de-gauzing, or whatever they call it. Anyway, so here we have a VIC-20. It's working. I will unplug it so that you can be reminded of what we saw. Now, the monitor is warmed up. It's all warm, it's all good, power switches off. Uh, and the big 20 is now connected. And I will turn it on. And immediately, oh, oh, oh. Well, that was a little different. There was a slight tweak of something first. Eh, not really. Maybe, possibly. It's orange. Now, also, when I was consulting Rudy of Rudy's Retro Intel, he did say it would not be a bad thing to try. Whoa, what happened? Something happened. Now it came up purple, then blue, then orange. Now it's blue. This, oh, now it's per orange. Oh. Anyway, Rudy said, not a bad thing. Even though I don't have the things for this whole diagnostic thing, but not a bad thing to just pop the cartridge in. Let's see if anything happens. Well, not really. Let's try that again. Blue, orange. Oh, there's a flicker. A flicker of red. Oh, 
Tight one here. Okay. So the cartridge is out. I'll unplug it. And. Uh, get my screwdriver that fits somewhat reasonably well. First thing I'm going to change, if I can get the screw out, the first thing I'm going to check is, of all things, oh, there we go, the big chip. Alright, so, first, keyboard. Off and it can go sit over there. This is not the screwdriver I seek. It's not a bad screwdriver, it is a Phillips. I need my little oh. I'm gonna put it in there. It's rare that I would do that. Here is a nice slotted screwdriver. And here some glasses. <sighs> well, in this machine, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven major chips. Only three of them, no, four of them, are in sockets. That is, well, it's the way it is. I would rather, oh, they were all socketed. They're not. So, I think what we're going to do is, by the way, this chip is always a challenge to get out because this cover is very tight. Oh, there we go. I did reseat this once. It made no difference. Oh, you know. I'm going to reseat it again. There's just one thing I just remembered as I was getting ready to pop it. And I'm sure it won't make a difference as best as I can be, but I'm going to try it. Inside this cover is are a couple of potentiometers. And they are often used ooh, to tweak. So maybe it's a yellow screen. It just looks orange because it's uh, down. I'm going to leave that up a bit. There's another one in here. I don't know if I can get the screwdriver in there. I guess I can. I'll tweak it a bit. And it doesn't really seem to make any difference. Alright. It seems to be putting on a funky doodle light show. Wow. Perhaps something. Oh, I may not run away. I don't know if it went away when I touched. or oh that's different something it's 
weird. I'm going to put that cartridge back in. We'll just see if I see anything at all that would be different. It's blue. No. All right. Continuing with, oh, I'm gonna pop out this chip. I'm assuming I can, I mean, I've had it. Okay, come on. I've had this, I've before. It is just a very tight, snug fit with this little case. Shield, as it were. Alright, come on, come on. There's really no room here. Oh, there we go. Okay. So here is the video chip. And you know what? I was going to take all the chips out, but I'm not going to. I just have a gut feeling. That there is so much going on with the video, there's a good chance that it could be, of all things, <laughs> the video chip. I don't really have a whole lot of space here. Alright, I'll put that down there. And, I'll put that down there. Don't fall. Don't fall. Here is a working Big 20. I will pop off the cover. I find it handy to sort of pry on this other cover thing that protects the edge connector thingy, wingy, dingy. Alright. Now I've got to get on this with firm, gentle pressure so that it pops. As I said, I was just going to take them all out, but something tells me I should stick to the Vic. We shall see. The pins all look good. The witness mark is good. It's funny, even with this beastly bright light here, at times, doesn't feel like I have enough light. Okay, we're lined up. We're in. And we're going to have a look. Why the video chip? Well, because we're having video troubles. So here's the moment of truth. Well, And funky things are happening. Maybe not identical, but certainly very similar. So, I'm going to pop this out. With great care. Set it over here. Take. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put the original picture back in. I'm not going to do that at a second. I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to reach down here. I'm going to grab the defective Vic 20. Take the good Vic chip. And line it up. Moment. We will have power. 
Walker. Here's that video. And we will see. So this is the bad Vic with the good Vic chip. Shazam. Shazam. Now. I'm going to put this diagnostic cartridge in, even though I don't have all the things, and it will not really run that much, and it won't do that much. It may not do anything. First, big surprise cartridges have been sometimes known to need a bit of a tweak. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. We get a little more. All right, what's going on? Great. Well, that's interesting. Not at all what I had in mind. Well, it did say on the bottom of this machine. Oh, this is the right. Okay, so there could be more things wrong. This is the bad machine. This could be the sign that there are more issues. I'll have to check with Rudy to see what he says. When you put in a cartridge and it doesn't work, leans. Well, it leads me to think maybe 6522. We will see. Anyway, um, so I'm going to take this out. So tight. I'm going to turn it on. This is perhaps also another reason why, when you have a VIC-20 or a Commodore 64 that comes up okay, doesn't necessarily mean it's okay. And I'm just glancing into the distance to see if I see another cartridge. And I don't see one right here in handy. But I suspect I do have something. I should try a game or something. So I think that is for the next episode. So, if you have a VIC-20, and this may not be surprising, by the way, I see some funny little shaky lines. That could also be the monitor. Um, if you have a VIC-20 and it comes up with an orange screen, a yellow screen, or funny, what, what we saw here, um, as it is video, yeah, go, go check the VIC chip. There may be more issues. Anyway, thanks so much for coming. Stay tuned. We will continue to explore. Until we meet again.